Hello viewers, you join me in London where I'm just outside the Natural History Museum. This is, in my opinion, one of the must-go-to places whenever you're visiting this particular part of the world. Today, I'll be taking a look at an exhibit on human evolution. Of course, creationists such as Jehovah's Witnesses believe that humans didn't evolve, that instead they popped into existence usually around 6,000 years ago. Jehovah's Witnesses even believe in a specific date. 4026 BCE was apparently when Adam was created. Of course, archaeological evidence contradicts this. I'm here at the Natural History Museum to see what that evidence looks like. The Human Evolution exhibit greets visitors almost immediately on entering the museum through the main entrance. I was immediately drawn to a wall of skulls showing the progression of our species through time from our earliest ancestors. These aren't authentic specimens, but they're recreations of authentic specimens. And it shows you the lineage of evolution from essentially when our ancestors split from chimpanzees and bonobos. That's when they count the start of effectively human evolution. That's the beginning of hominins. So the very first hominin at the bottom is Sahelanthropus tacadensis. And then you have a whole bunch of hominins from that line until you get more modern humans, such as Homo rudolfensis, Homo erectus, Homo habilis. Here are the Neanderthals. And eventually you have humans. And what's really interesting is inside, they're showing you the specimens that they've found and recreations of what they would have looked like with the flesh and what have you. So really, really interesting exhibit. Let's have a look. The exhibit is fascinating and takes you on a six million year journey from the first hominins to the only surviving species today, modern Homo sapiens. To the left when you walk in is a glass case showing side by side skeletons of a gorilla, a chimpanzee, both of which are non-hominins, and a modern human. This is really helpful for those from a fundamentalist or creationist background, since once you strip away the hair and skin, the similarities between ourselves and our closest living relatives are unmistakable. The fact that we share 98% of our DNA with chimpanzees in particular is clearly evident. Elsewhere, a variety of specimens of early hominins, some originals, some replicas were on show. I particularly like the recreations of faces based on the specimens themselves and the best available scientific evidence, such as you see here with Homo erectus. The replica you see here on the right is recreated from a skull found in Java, Indonesia, dated to about one million years ago. A highlight were these life-size recreations of ancient Neanderthal and human remains, crafted by two brothers in Holland, Adri and Alphonse Kennis. The Neanderthal model is based on 40,000-year-old remains found at Spy in Belgium, although the information plaque notes that in real life he likely wouldn't have been naked for all that long because he would have been living during Earth's last ice age and hence would have been normally covered in animal skins to survive. The Homo sapiens model is based on remains of humans living around 30,000 years ago and helps establish that while taller and less stocky than their Neanderthal cousins, we humans are remarkably similar and have been since long before Adam was supposedly fashioned out of dust in a garden with a talking snake. More than anything, I appreciated the honesty and lack of dogmatism in this exhibit. For example, in a wall text, the writers stated, ancient human fossils are often fragmentary, and scientists have developed an array of techniques to make the most of the piecemeal evidence these fossils can provide. Examples include analyzing fossilized plaque on teeth to help determine aspects of ancient human diets and health. 
they also use 3D scanning, modelling and reconstruction to show how ancient humans would have looked and moved, and a plethora of dating techniques to help situate each species in time. Still, many gaps in our knowledge remain. As I reach the end of the exhibit, the product of countless scientists striving over many decades to better understand our origins with honesty, diligence and attention to detail, I had much on which to reflect. It's actually quite humbling to walk around this exhibit because you realise how much history there is to human evolution and how unlikely it is almost for us to arrive here, given how much savagery and conflict and diseases and goodness knows what took place in the ancient past that challenged our ancestors and made them come up with all sorts of ingenious ways of surviving. But even though there are very few samples and the reason why there are a few samples is because it's hard for any living thing to just die and leave its mark on our planet. Organic matter breaks down. The likelihood of Tibor or myself or anyone being discoverable in any identifiable form hundreds of thousands of years from now is basically non-existent. But every now and then, something allows it, a geological process for example, that the exact location of someone dying makes it possible for remains to be preserved. And what I really, really like about this exhibit is it's showing you not the actual authentic remains in most cases, there are some authentic remains, but in most cases what they're showing you are replicas but rather than simply saying replica, 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 if you actually read the plates, they say replica, original to be found in this museum here in Cairo or this museum here in Berlin or, or wherever. It's giving you a means of sourcing the original specimen. So there's honesty there. There's honesty in the story of how we've learned about our origins. And again, it's, it's humbling to think that our species has been on this great long journey, that instead of lasting only 6,000 years, or thereabouts, has actually lasted millions of years. And humans as we know them today have all of these different relatives that were also people. It's an absolutely fascinating exhibit, and I can see myself coming back.